Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today I'm here with Fairy Tail 100 years quest episode number 5 reaction so the previous episode uh, a few things happened first and foremost uh, Go uh, Toka was confronted by Jalal but Laksas came, come, uh, comes and saves her and uh, you know in the end that whole thing happens and uh, Toka is brought back to the guild Laksas does tell her that you know if you're hiding something you better tell me um, you know so that's that while we have the whole battle against uh you know like the uh, dragon eaters and the fairy tale members elsa has been able to come out of the hypnosis because you know one of her eyes are is, is you know like we know one of her eyes is not uh, real so she is her you know the the effect has half on her and she gets up she saves everyone else and then their battle gets renewed again um this time however natsu is able to uh, properly fight against the person that he is more uh, compatible with which was that armor dude uh, you know like he fights him and uh, you know like Skullface was fought by um, uh, no sorry uh, Wendy was able to fight the p person he was compatible with which is the skull skull face that dude with the with the ash ability so you know that is how wind was able to defeat ash while fire was able to go against armor done with that we are done with that and now the Elsa and versus Kyria is going on Elsa has pulled out like a like some kind of a like a like a sword type of thing I don't know what that exactly is like she said like Wendy helped her with that so that's that and in the end we also get to know that Toka indeed is actually the white mage but it looks more like a split personality kind of thing so let's see what happens episode number five I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here think it whichever is the preference and let's begin Game, okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. And this is the thing. I still don't think this is his personality because the original personality usually has no clue about their split personality. That's not how split personality works. Oh yeah, Brandish also helped us. I forgot that completely. Yeah, because of her we were able to, like Natsu and Wendy can fight properly. <laughs> She's like, yep, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> True.
Hmm. A better choice. Hmm. Well. <laughs> what the hell? Damn, she came flying, flying in. <laughs> oh boy. Well, there you go. <laughs> ah, there's gray as well. Okay. Oh! Right. Well, we gotta heat him up again. <laughs> Damn! Yeah. Well... Yep. Well, you gotta get out of here first. I was like, I just gonna take care of you before that. Oh! 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 What? Oh! Right! F got flung out! Wait, that was... Okay, great, fantastic. So, you still wanna fight? Yeah, you guys caught us off guard, you... Like... Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to get uh, the white maze. Yeah, we can beat you up again, you know, a few moments ago that was happening. Oh great, there's more of them. Fantastic. Well, we also have a lot of people with us back in, you know. Yeah, run. Bro, shut up, you guys lost. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Typical villain. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll be back again. Now let's run. <laughs> I, I don't think that's... Oh my god, it's freaking ash. Yo, guys, you need a boat. Oh no, they're, they're on top of the... Top of the... Oh yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, so they're stranded, basically. Hmm. <laughs> mm. How? Oh, I guess they have Happy and Carla, but... <laughs> oh my god.
Well, he's coming with the whole census. Oh god, the 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 water. Oh my god, what the Oh no, he's he cannot control his power. Yeah. <laughs> they're both they're both motion sick again. Yeah, you yeah, there you go, it's better. Oh, the, the water, I think. Hmm. Ah. Well, better go, better go there. Oh god, oh. Yeah, it's going underwater and yo, damn. Yeah. Oh God. Damn. Well. Yeah, it's Mercurophobia's power going out of control. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh, he's out. There he is. Bruh. Damn. <laughs> like, obviously, he's a dragon. He's so damn big. Just look at that. Hmm. God damn. He's huge. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Are all these god dragons this big? That is gonna be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that is true. I, I didn't think about it like that. The one who led the one. I'm. What? How? Oh, maybe to try to, uh, you know, like. You know, because he was concerned about the fact that his powers will go out of control. Maybe that's why he wanted the white, she wanted the white mage to take his power. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Hmm. That's why she tried in her own way to. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. Right, so it didn't go as she expected. Yeah, I would have expected the same as well. Hmm. 
Like it is true. If he doesn't have his power, why is the whole thing still? Damn. Right. This whole. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Power to control. Oh. Wait, so. Which talk are you? The normal one, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Enchantment. Oh. Well, yeah, they're not here. There you go. I was correct. It's not split personality. Because split personality doesn't work like that. You know, she would have no clue if there's another personality existed inside of her. If she's the main personality, she would have no clue about it. The fact that she knows means she's possessed. There you go. Yeah, she's back. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, well... Right. Oh, the, yeah, so, so, oh my god, so she's manipulating the water dragon god from here. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Why? Like, what is she even trying to do? Like, talk. Uh, what? Um, white mage. What is she even trying to do? Like this. Oh boy. Mm. Yeah. Mm.
Mm. Okay. Damn. Oh God, yeah. Right. Right. Wait, it went underwater. Oh my god, now what? Oh. Uh. Oh my god, what? What's happening? Oh no. What in the... Yeah, what is happening? Oh, this reminds me of Eden Zero. You <laughs> know, the, the sea in the sky. What the hell? So is this is it going to drop the whole ocean on us or something? Is that what he's planning? God damn. What the hell? She's... Oh no, did she defeat everyone or something? Oh no. She defeated everyone? Yeah? What the hell? She took everyone's power or something? What the hell? Because that's what she does. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Mm. 
right that was today's episode okay um so today we had the um continuation of the battle between um you know dragon eaters and uh not continuation in that sense but you know like they fought for a little bit erza fought kiria and you know defeated her and uh, then the dragon eaters realized that oh like i can't we cannot do anything in this situation because you know like we need more people to help us so they just left and uh, yeah so obviously their goal is as they said is to take out uh, uh, or consume um, the white mage and uh, that is why you know they're going to be doing that um however like so here's the thing um i'm still not 100 percent sure as to what uh, what the white mage's power is because they did explain it how she can take others power but it turns out she didn't really take um, Mercury's Fovia's power, but what she did is she took the ability to control it. So that is why she can remotely control uh, Mercury's Fovia and uh, make him go like, you know, like berserk over here. And he's basically manipulating his powers by just sitting there, you know, like, and just remotely doing it. So that's what's happening. So I'm not 100% sure what that technically means. So does that mean that the um, dragon eaters the fact that they're trying to go to um, the white mage and trying to take uh, or consume her or take her power will that not work because technically she didn't really take the dragon god's power all she did was she took the ability to control it so taking the ability to control its power and taking its power as completely two different things so what the dragon eaters are planning is that a complete failure because they're technically going towards the white mage because they think you know she took their power she took the dragon god's power but that's not the case so that's why i'm saying i'm not 100 percent clear on what she's doing because i'm pretty sure she did say that she has the ability to take power and that is why she also came to fairy tale um and in the ending scene we can see i'm assuming she took everyone's power you know and that's what she says like you know like the she said something like that in the end where she said and with that another black butt has been ripped and everything has been um dyed in white so i'm assuming that she's talking about like she took their power or something like that so i'm guessing that means that maybe she had the like the ability to take the dragon god's power but she didn't she took the ability to control it so that she can manipulate the dragon god from here in a remote location uh or something like that obviously her also another goal as we see she kind of said it here that one of her goals was to like you know get to wendy uh you know the the, the enchanter where's that part here we go. Atoka herself said, my body has been taken away by the white mage. And she said that... Wait a minute. Oh no, sorry. She came to... Okay, no, no, no. Sorry, I, I, I forgot uh, what she said. Toka said she came here so that she can get help from Wendy. Who, who might be able to separate Toka and her. At which the white mage was like... Oh, like my there's apparently as you know like one of my servants apparently the mage that you've come to take help from the enchanter which is wendy she's just beside my servant should i take her out then and she says something like that so you know so that means um that is also one of uh, like you know the white mage's goal is not to let toka go to wendy uh something like that now there's a lot of questions i have about the whole toka and white mage situation like the uh you know like like the questions being number one which is how does this work like you can see there's sometimes that toka stays in control sometimes that the white mage like like kind of forcefully takes control from over her but i'm assuming she cannot keep control forever she probably has to go down or like you know like and and then toka's personality comes out then because if that's not the case, I'm pretty sure the white mage would have kept being the white mage and not let control back to Toka. The fact that Toka has control from the majority of the part probably tells me there's some kind of a time limit that, um, you know, the white mage has 
and the amount of time limit that she can keep being outside as the dominant personality. You know, otherwise, you know, I, I feel like she would have just stayed out forever in, and won't let Toka come out. That's another thing. Another thing you can say here, see here, is that when uh, Toka says, like, I've come here to ask help from Wendy so that she can separate us, um, you can see the white mage was like, oh, why are you telling my secrets? And then she also said that, should I take care of Wendy then? I can, you know, there's my servant beside her. I can literally order him to destroy Wendy and kill her or something like that. She said, like, should I do that? So this makes me think that there's a high chance that the white mage actually needs to keep staying inside of Toka. Like from the way she reacted, it seems like she there's some kind of a reason why she doesn't want to let go of Toka. You know, otherwise it makes no sense because I'm thinking about this. Why Toka? You know, couldn't there be any other host who is, you know, maybe on par with Toka or even better than her? Why particularly Toka? And the fact that when Toka said, I've come here to separate myself, the way she reacted, it makes me think there's some kind of a special situation that uh, maybe she's having, she, she has difficulty like integrating with someone or like, you know, taking over someone. And maybe she and Toka has high compatibility. Maybe that is why she doesn't want to let Toka go because if she loses Toka's body, then she'll have trouble to find a new host. Maybe something like that, you know, otherwise it, it, it you know, it's a, it's a, like, I, I just thought like, if she wants to separate them, why is the white mage reacting like this? Couldn't she just be like, okay, I'll find a new host. Probably not. There's something going on here. So which it was the particularly, that is why she actually needs maybe uh, Toka's body as a host, maybe some kind of a situation, maybe, like I said, maybe some kind of a compatibility factor. Maybe she's very compatible with Toka. That's why she doesn't want to let her go or let her body go so that, you know, she can keep staying inside of her and use her as a vessel. Maybe something like that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, there's like kind of these questions I still have. I'm assuming they'll be answering them little by little. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Either way, that is the whole situation with Toka. You know, so that's that. And because of that, we can see Mercurophobia starts going out of control and Caramel comes in and asks for Fairy Tail's help and tells them to steal or kill Mercurophobia. Obviously, Natsu is being conflicted by this because obviously in his eyes, you know, like Mercurophobia is a good person. So, you know, like trying to kill that person or steal that person is something that Natsu doesn't want to do. But the whole situation kind of, you know, is like this so she, he will have to take a proper decision so yeah let's see how this goes like you know and uh, yeah and oh we also got to know how um the white mage was able to get his hands on um uh, mercurophobia's power it was caramel who thought that you know when because mercurophobia always said that oh like like i, I can't really blame her because you know for her uh, you know mercurophobia is everything and then one day suddenly Mercurophobia is like, oh, like my power is going out of control. Uh, unless and I'm, until I'm able to control it, I might have to just lay down my life and get sealed by whichever person um, Erismeria, like, you know, uh, sends next. I might need to lay down my life for that. Obviously, Karamil was like, what the hell? No, you know, I don't want that. And at which she started thinking, she was like, how can I make it so he doesn't think like that? The only way she could find out, uh, she could, she could figure out is that, oh, if I'm able to somehow make his power go down. So that is why Karamil came up with this plan that, oh, maybe if I use the white mage and she takes away his power, maybe that's how the whole situation will stop. And, you know, she, his power won't go out of control, which is a, a fairly logical conclusion to come to, because obviously, you know, like the white mage apparently takes people's power. So if he, she takes Mercurophobia's power, it won't be a problem anymore so she came to that logical conclusion and she asked for help and uh, yeah the white mage completely scammed her just completely did the opposite thing not didn't take away her his power but took away his power to control which is why the whole situation started becoming even worse because now she cannot even con he cannot even control anything um so yeah that's what's going on over here and it's just 
and all. Like I said, I can't really blame her because anyone in that type of situation would have thought that she had to do something and this was the best she could think of at that time. And as she said, she's not a wizard, she's a human. You know, there's stuff that she, there's limited stuff that she can do, you know. So she has to ask for help from other people. She cannot do anything on her own, <clears throat> especially in these type of situations. Right. Anyway, so that's how this is going. So let's see how this goes and how this whole thing concludes. Um, why, uh, the white mage has taken out fairy tales, so I do wonder what's going to happen with that. Let's wait and see. And there you go. That was today's episode. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Now let me talk about this episode scene by scene. In the very first scene, you can see that, you know, like the battle resumes. And uh, so basically, um, uh, Natsu defeated the armor dude. And Elsa is fighting against um, Kiria. So this is where, you know, like it ended. So this is from where this it resumes. Uh, you know, in Natsu, since he went so completely, you know, like he increased the heat so much, it completely destroyed Wendy's dress. So Wendy's like, what the hell? And thankfully, Lucy comes in perfect time. And Lucy uses Gemini to, uh, you know, like make a dress for Wendy. Grey comes in as well. So there you go. We have more reinforcements. And, uh, you know, so that's what's going on. Either way, uh, um, the armor dude gets up. I think his name is Mad Madmol or something like that. Madmol, yeah. Madmol gets up. And uh, Natsu's like, alright, let's do it again then. So now Natsu starts increasing the heat again. And this heat is so like crazy that underneath Kiria and Elsa's fighting, Kiria starts getting affected by it. Kiria's like, what the hell is this? You know, her whole dress, her armor, everything is melting. And she's like, why are you not melting? At which Elsa says, I have a fire resistant armor, obviously, so I'm fine. You know, but you're not fine. So there you go. So the battle, like, you know, like, begins again. In, you know, she tries to attack Elsa, but Elsa just counters her and uses that blade with the flame to attack Kyria and hits her so hard that she just yanks her out in the open and just, yeah. So obviously, I'm assuming, um, so taking that opportunity, um, Scullion, I think that's his name, the Ash dude, he made Kiria into ash and brought her back towards them. And uh, this kind of made me realize that you can use this power for a supportive role as well. Because, you know, up until now, I was just thinking like, oh, this ash power is basically, you know, like an offensive power. Like, oh, anything that you offensive and a defensive power, like anything that you touch, it becomes ashes. Nothing can touch you, can make the attacks turn into ash. You know, so in a sense, if you think about it now, like now that I'm seeing this, you can also use it in a supportive way. For example, if it seems like someone or your ally is going to get hurt by something, you can turn them into ash and reconstruct them back again. So that's how you can support them. And that's literally what he did here by bringing, making um, Kiria into ash and just saving her over there. Either way, that's that, and, and then like now, like hmm, it's you know what? It seems like you guys are you guys are actually stronger than we thought. And I'm like, yeah, obviously, like you guys, the 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 matchup of the whole thing that happened in the previous episode was so damn bad, you know? Like Elsa's uh, like strength got cut. She had no clue what the hell was going on, as she got completely caught off guard. Natsu got flung into a boat where his motion sick sickness started ha happening. And, uh, you know, like, and Grey got attacked by someone who makes everything into ash, you know. So the matchup was horrible. You know, that's why we saw, you know, like in the previous episode, the matchup, when it got better, it got automatically better. Wendy against Scullion was way better because Wendy's wind and ash, you cannot do anything to ash. You know, wind sweeps away ash. That's the thing. While we have Natsu and uh, uh, like Madmol properly fighting with no motion sickness anymore, because thanks to Brandish, you know, so the situations were better now. You know, it wasn't heavily, you know, like favoring the enemies. That is why it, it was easier for us to you know fight back this time. Yeah, you know? and they're like, oh, like we, I didn't realize that you guys were this strong. And I'm like, yeah, obviously you guys had an unfair advantage. Um, either way, so now they're like, okay, you know, nothing we can do now. We'll need to bring back our other guild members. 
and they also said how they're going to try to uh, deal with the white mage you know and they just turn into ash and just leave so there you go that's that and i love how um who said who asked like what about the ship what happened oh no natsu natsu's like they left their own ship behind and then they realized the ship is also ash so yeah anyways the um, thankfully you know the the platform was there so you know they they didn't fall into the ocean they fell they, they fell on top of the thing and now they're like all right so let's let's go back to uh, you know the, the the place and let's go and talk with mercury phobia at which and lucy kind of says like oh but you know like caramel kind of kicked us out <laughs> and i said like, ah, fine like you know we'll, we'll go talk to him and her and you know convince her and all that <laughs> either way while all of this is happening caramel um was there beside mercurophobia mercurophobia you know his consciousness comes back but then she realizes he cannot control his power and it makes sense because toka is apparently controlling it not toka sorry white mage um so that's what's going on over there and uh, you know while all of this is going on our group fairy tale is trying to use that boat to go back but it's too damn cramped you know and then they're like all right like we like carla and uh, happy can just carry wendy and natsu and they'll not have motion sickness as well you know it's so funny because <laughs> i remember they explained in season one of fairy tale as to why motion sickness doesn't work on natsu when she he's carried by happy i think he said something like oh it's because happy is not a vehicle <laughs> he's he's my friend <laughs> that's why i don't get motion sick <laughs> which is pretty funny you know like like an explanation like why he doesn't get motion sick when happy's carrying him um yeah either way so that's that and then they realize like the the town is like something's going on like there's like smoke and everything coming out so they're like all right let's go and see what's going on they go there sees the whole town in ruins you know we get to see um this dude the the manager dude and sharket i think she was in trouble so natsu goes and saves her and we get to see mercuriophobia properly here and he's goddamn big he's too damn big you know obviously natsu's like wow he's even bigger than igneel and uh, you know and that is why and, and all the ocean the water everything is like all over the place destroying the town and everything caramel comes in and caramel is like it's like i'm sorry it's like most of it is my fault and this is where she comes clean about what happened you know that she's the one who let the white mage come close to mercurophobia and she recounts as uh, she she tells her tale she tells how uh, like i said i don't blame her because you know in, in because to her mercurophobia the person who saved her he was like oh i might lay down my life because if i let my power go out of control even more i'll harm the people over here so in, in so she was not happy about that obviously she's like what the hell no i cannot let you do that but mercurophobia was like convinced so obviously caramel thought like what is the best way to make him stop thinking like this and the best thing she could come up with is like yeah if if you can steal his power maybe it's not going to go out of control that's why she went to toka and uh, not toka sorry the white mage and uh, that is what happened so that's why i'm saying I'm, i cannot really blame her she this was the best thing she could think of and that's what she did again as she said i'm not a i'm not a wizard or a mage i'm i'm just an ordinary human like i need to ask for help in these type of situations i cannot do anything on my own you know so that's why she went and asked for help but freaking white mage decided to screw them over and she only took the ability to control i think that's what she says here okay here we go i thought if he had, if i didn't have his power the town would go back to normal okay so she says but um where is that part she says it here we go i was wrong um where is it where she says okay the holy dragon's power water dragon's power continue to spiral out of control okay she did take his power but it wasn't the magical energy itself the white mage took for the holy water dragon was the power to control you know what i guess now that i'm thinking about it in a sense 
you know taking the power to control technically means that unless and until uh, you know the white mage allows him he cannot use his power in a way it also means that she did take away his power in that sense yeah she didn't take away the magical energy the mana but she took her the ability to control so like it's kind of like that like and if you think about it like a uh, i don't know like a um like an electric you know like a lamp for example it has a switch electric lamp electricity you know like flows into the electric lamp that is why the electric lamp when you light it it lights up you know and to do that you have a switch you can turn it on turn it off so basically what happened is that the white mage didn't really take away the electric current or the electric power in itself to stop the light from glowing what she did is she took the ability to control the switch so if you think about it if you don't turn the switch on the the, the bulb will not light you know so technically she has taken away the power if you think about it that way but it's not that she took away the electricity she didn't take away the power she took away the ability to turn the power on and off which at the end of the day is literally the result is the same if you take away the ability to switch on the thing it won't switch on you know so instead of taking away the power she took away the ability to turn it on and off so in that sense i'm assuming she did the same to the fairy tale members as well she took away the ability to control the magic so if she took away the ability to control the magic she can automatically be like oh you guys won't be able to use your power and they won't be able to use that doesn't mean she took away the mana or magical energy that's still there but she's taken the ability to control it so at the end of the day the result is the same but theoretically it's a bit different i think i understand it properly a lot better now like what what she actually does okay i see the white mage ma ma can manipulate others magical energy from zero to max at a will like i said it's the ability to switch on and off you know zero when you switch it off it's zero when you switch it on it's max so basically that something like that and there you go uh, and then we see toka has uh, become conscious and obviously gajil and they've like you know kind of tied her up and they ask her like what's going on who are you? at first they ask who are you and she's like oh I'm, I'm the normal toka and then they ask her questions and she's like oh it's you know she kind of tells them what has happened so she says she is definitely looking for natsu obviously that's not a lie but she's also looking for Wendy and uh, you know like because with Mendy's separation magic she wants to separate herself from the white mage at which you know uh, this is where um, Toka uh, not Toka sorry white mage manifests and she takes control over her like I said I do wonder what the rules and regulations are like I'm sure that that white mage cannot take control anytime anywhere I'm sure there's some kind of a restriction Otherwise, she would have taken control over her all the time, you know. So that's another thing I feel like we'll get to know later. Either way, um, so Toka gets, uh, the white mage gets up and she's like, oh, like, you know, I, I have my servant and, you know, like the, who I'm remotely controlling from here. And Wendy's just in front of him. Like, should I just tell my servant to take care of the situation? And, you know, she gets up like a, smoke kind of comes out and she's like oh i'm going to turn you all into uh you know like you're going to dye everything in white you fairy tale will be gone this and that she's saying you know and while all of this is happening back to fairy tale we get to see it is uh caramel comes in and she's crying and she tells fairy tale to defeat and kill mercurophobia otherwise he'll harm the people that she he wants to protect you know Anyways, Nasu gets angry. At first, Nasu's like, like, no, but she's a, he's a good person. But then he gets angry. He he grabs, uh, you know, Kamil's collar, and he's like, what the hell? Like, at first you go to the white mage, and then you come to us, like, you know. And she's like, what can I do? Like, you know, like I I don't I'm not a mage. I don't have the power. Like, I, like this is all I can do. You know, Elsa calms Nasu down, and you know, Nasu's like, but he's a good person. Carla says like, it doesn't matter if he's a good person or not. The situation now dictates that we take care of this situation if not he will be harming the people that he wanted to protect and also you yourself said that if he harms the people close to me i won't let him go in the end nasu you know decides to go and you know 
fight. Uh, Wendy gives all of them, you know, except Natsu, obviously. Natsu has himself is a dragon slayer, so he doesn't need it. But all of the others, he gives them dragon slaying magic. He enchants them, so all their attacks will now, you know, work on the dragon uh, mercurophobia. You know, so each of them, like, do their own thing. Like, Grey used the cannon thing. Um, Elsa uses her equip. Natsu uses normal dragon slaying power. Uh, if Lucy becomes Sagittarius, uses the spirit dress and becomes Sagittarius and starts shooting. All this happened. It seemed like things were, you know, like, you know, they were attacking and they were harming and they were, you know, like, doing some damage to Mercuriophobia. In the end, it turns out it just goes down and does something. The whole ocean starts going up on top and the whole ocean is on top of us. The water surface is all dry. It's just land now. And the ocean is on top. So he's that strong. Obviously, you know, no wonder they call him Dragon God. You know, not only him, every single other Dragon God, I'm sure they have some craziest power like this. You know. So I do wonder what they're going to do with that now. While all of this is going on, we see White Mage is just drinking tea and everyone is just sprawled on the ground. And uh, I'm assuming she has taken away every single person's power to control their magic because that's what she does you know she can manipulate the ability to control that means you know which at the end of the day which means that if she doesn't want they won't be able to use their power so it's the same result of losing your magic um yeah uh, either way, uh, that is how it ended. So let's see how this goes in the next episode. Uh, what happens to Fairy Tail and what happens to Natsu and his group. Yeah, so there you go. That was my uh, reaction to this episode. Episode number um, 5 of yeah, Fairy Tail's 100 Year Quest. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say. Anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. That is it guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Fairy Tale. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.